I had a list for games that couldn't have direct sequels, Silent Hill would be right next to Final Fantasy. For horror games, direct sequels make the least amount of sense because horror is all about the mystery and the unreality in its settings, and the characters you meet, so having some sort of repeating canon would ruin that. And I won't say that completely kills the potential of Silent Hill 3, it does make for an iffy sort of experience. Silent Hill 3 starts by falling down the basement stairs because it comes with the worst intro I've ever seen. The intro fails at every point to get the player gripped by the plot and basically amounts to random spooky things happening and hoping the player gets it and then stretches further to introduce the player to combat so difficult that it would make the original blush. Putting the closers, those seven foot tall vagina face things, in the first level was a cruel move, because I tried killing one. The closer managed to eat ten handgun shells and still keep coming at Heather, so it's basically a four stealth section, a prickly bugbear of video games. But guess what? There's no stealth. You walk into the hallway and you've got three closers on your tail right at the start of the game. This move makes no fucking sense since everything from Silent Hill Origins to 2 was able to be killed in less than 5 shots, so having these bullet sponges in a game where resource management is still important is ridiculous as shit. So the game starts with having a character have no idea where she is, being followed by a complete stranger and then dumped into a monster infested building that expects them to solve puzzles. Thankfully, the staple of Silent Hill remains intact as 3 has some great puzzle design. My favorite was the first keypad at the hospital, because it requires math to figure out and it made me feel like a damn big shot getting it right the first time. Getting through the areas, we start piecing together a better picture of what's going on because the plot is flimsy at best. Claudia shows up at one point to freak out Heather with her religious revelations, and Vincent shows up later to start showing that Heather is special. Then there's Douglas who shows up as a sign that Silent Hill is hiding something very, very weird. The strange thing is that no one seems concerned that Silent Hill is becoming monster invested and perverting reality. That's great, because Silent Hill 3 has some great scares in it. The best is when Heather dicks around with a mannequin at the office building, and before she leaves it ends up decapitated, leaking blood after it screamed. And then there's the real corpse being dropped at the Borley Mansion, which gets really annoying after a while because the mansion has a stupid insta-death section and the jump scare is required to unlock the door to that. For the game's credit, out of the series it's the most intense game yet, Silent Hill 3 doesn't start anywhere sane and rational, and the descent into hell is miles more disturbing since the last other hill level deteriorates so much that the walls start glowing. But the game's biggest strength is in its writing. Silent Hill 3's flavor text is amazing because it uses its teenage main character to have a dialogue that's simultaneously sarcastic and afraid enough to be believable. Every time Heather finds a new save point, she has a different line about it. It's a great addition because the reactions to Silent Hill's insanity puts us right into the shoes of Heather, getting the player deeply immersed into the horror. Silent Hill 3 and Konami's decision to have a female lead goes beyond tokenism so much that I'm surprised that she isn't mentioned alongside Samus and Bayonetta as strong female characters in video games. And this is shown in the scene where Harry Mason was murdered. Yeah, the weird thing is that most of Silent Hill 3 depicts Heather's walk home, and she does what you'd expect. She gets emotional, she cries, she's lashing out at the people around her for no reason in anger, and makes a boneheaded decision to go on a Kratos revenge path to avenge him. Thankfully, she met Douglas, who's as much of a fuckhead to go along with this. When they both get to Silent Hill is when the problem starts showing again. Silent Hill 3 takes place in locations from Silent Hill 2, which destroys the theory that Silent Hill was created from James and Mary's unrequited regret and fear because Heather can even go to the strip club and find some resources there. Later on, we get to see that the game has some clever callbacks to Silent Hill at the amusement park, where we find one of Harry's save notes before getting on the haunted carousel again for a boss fight. That's tough, but not impossible. It's a balance that games should learn from because it acknowledges continuity instead of drowning a sequel in the tangled web of plot twist bullshit. 
Thankfully, Silent Hill 3 can stand on its own merits even if the game is flooded with insanely tough enemies that ruin the final level because it goes for multiple horror types, dealing with the unknown, the supernatural, the immediately threatening, the mortal terrors, and it gives each level its own distinct feel, and even though Silent Hill is the paragon of scares, it wasn't until the final scene that the fans got to see something truly revolting. The game ends with Heather finding Claudia, and Heather managing to avert the god birth prophecy by taking some of the medicine that created the incubus back in Silent Hill that Harry gave her, and literally vomiting the god fetus upon which the heartbroken Claudia eats it herself, becoming the aberration. The entire church level built up to support this, because by that point, Silent Hill had become so batshit that it was literally melting in a couple places. Although the boss fight with God is annoying and repetitive at best. Seeing the game crossing all the lines raised the bar and Konami continued its wise decisions right up to the epilogue where the player is shown that even after all of the danger finishes and all the bullshit goes away and all the scaring's done, Heather continues to have a sense of humor. The final joke is beyond hilarious and leaves the audience with some well needed closure. So, did I like Silent Hill 3? I'd say that it's comparable to my feelings about Metal Gear Acid. There's a fee you have to pay in order to deal with the horrible combat. But if you can get over that, then the story on the other side is highly rewarding. Heather Mason is the best Silent Hill character yet because she has an actual personality that shows in her amazing dialogue where in spite of being afraid, she still has the sanity to be sarcastic about everything around her. There is a lot of bad things the game does that I could bring up, but I'd still say get it because having an intense in your face Silent Hill is genuinely frightening and continues to have excellent provoking puzzles. So that leaves us with the last Konami developed Silent Hill, The Room. And I'm excited for a game in which the scariest thing in it could be a bunch of locks. But until then, I'll be putting up the scores. And wishing you all a victory for gamers. See you next time.